Hey, hello there everybody, Tim from Alpha Wolf Trading coming at you with this weekend's market wrap and stocks to watch for next week. I got a lot to get through, so I'm just going to hop right into it. Um, boy, there's, you know, I don't want to seem like a permable, <laughs> but I got to tell you, I'm pretty excited by what I see in the charts. Things look pretty darn bullish out there still. And, you know, earnings season this season has been pretty darn good. The business climate, whether you like the president or don't like the president, the business climate just seems to be a lot more positive, a lot more friendly than it has been for the previous eight years. So I think there are some things, you know, there may be some companies out there that have priced in a lot of good news of things that haven't happened. But, you know, these earnings that have been coming out have been pretty darn impressive. And, and it's hard to deny that. And what I'm excited about a little bit with some of these charts that I'm looking at in different sectors and um, different um, indexes is they did exactly, you know, what we kind of wanted to see. I mean... The NASDAQ, you know, is basically consolidating. Now, it does have a gap down here to potentially fill, and it could could back and fill and come, come down and test that 50-day moving average. It's been one of the strongest sectors out there. Um, but still looking pretty bullish, right? I mean, we're, we're hitting all-time highs. with and, and, and we're not parabolic, right? We're not completely out of the upper Bollinger Band. It's not like we're, we're going crazy here. We've worked off this overbought condition that we had, and we're consolidating. It still looks very, very bullish, at least from a technical standpoint. So let's go ahead and take a look at some other stuff here. Uh, FAS, right? So uh, the financials had a gap up a little, about a couple weeks back, and then we've been pulling back and consolidating. We closed this gap and, you know, basically our bounced right where we needed to bounce and, and we're testing the 50-day simple moving average if we can take that out with some conviction i think that would be good for the financials now those are thicker stocks typically and more long-term holds or swing trades than they are uh, day trade opportunities but still it shows you that the sector itself is looking fairly fairly decent right uh let's take a look at gold now Gold has not, I, it, 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 as a pro member of Alpha Wolf Trading, the pro members know that I have not been very positive on gold or gold miners for uh, a while now. And that was just because of the price action in gold. And, and uh, you know, we pierced the lower Bollinger Band. We got a little bit of a bounce on Friday. We didn't get a big snapback. We just got a little bit of a bounce. Now, I don't know if uh, any of you watch Carter Worth. I happen to respect the guy. I think he's a great uh, technical analyst, chartist, really good on, on uh, options, action, fast money. Um, and, you know, he's looking for a potential snapback bounce in silver. And I think if you get a, a snapback bounce in silver, you probably get a snapback bounce in gold. Uh, GDX, J, GDX, right? What concerns concerns me about these is these haven't gotten out of the lower Bollinger Band. Gold itself did, but these actually look like a pretty controlled move down, the miners, right? Pretty controlled move down. And, you know, you've got this, the 50 days sloping down. you got the 200 day, which is starting to curl down. Just not a good looking setup in the miners or gold now could we get a snapback sure there could be a short-term trading opportunity there if the french french election goes horribly wrong and you know the le pen i guess is her name if she gets in and uh that could be very disruptive for the markets we could see gold get a a huge spike because of fear of a brexit type event happening with france so there are some outliers there, right? Uh, North Korea absolutely is, is a concern. I mean, uh, something bad happens there that could flip the switch overnight and change my whole thesis or whole theory 
about how good everything looks, right? Everything could just collapse. So you always have to be aware of that and keep that in mind, but you trade what is in front of you. And gold and gold miners do not look very healthy right now. Uh, so I would be cautious in that space. If you look to play, you play for a quick trade opportunity. I wouldn't be looking to build a long term position there. Uh, IBB. So IBB was, you know, it has been struggling with this $300 area for a while. Now we have a gap on the daily that could potentially fill. We come back down and you know, we've got a short term trend line. We pierced the upper bullish band. We were up basically six or seven days in a row on the IBB. So for us to take a breather here is expected, right? I would expect that to happen. We basically came down and tested the 50 SMA on Friday. We bounced right off of it. Now, could we come continue to drift down and close this gap out and bounce off the 50 EMA? We could. We're working off an overbought condition, but I still think we are in a nice uptrend above the 200 day moving average and looking pretty darn good in the IBB. Biotech, right? So still looking pretty darn good there. This is impressive. IWM, you know, we, we basically came down and we kissed the 50 day simple moving average. We worked off the overbought condition when we got out of the upper Bollinger Band. We closed the gap on the daily, right? And we bounced right where, right where we should bounce. We've got stochastics curling up. We've got uh, relative strength is not overdone. I, you know, to me, this looks really encouraging. If we take out this trend line, I think we go back up and test the 141 area and see if we can take out 141. IYT also closed the gap on the daily, right? We, we, we had a nice little pop. We got up above the 50 SMA. We pulled back. We closed the gap. We came down to the 100 EMA and we have now started to bounce and we've reclaimed and closed above the 50 SMA. Now the 50 SMA is sloping down, uh, but you've got the 200 day, which is sloping up. So let's see what happens next week. Let's see if we take out this trend line and start to move higher. We're likely going to have some resistance right around 168. We take out 168. I think that would be a very positive event for uh, the transportation sector. So real quickly, we'll just look at JNUG and, and Nugget. I mean, it, you know, look, these are the triple levered uh, JNUG is and uh, Nugget as well if we do get a bounce in gold and we do get a bounce in um, some of the uh, you know uh, get a bounce in gold in some of the commodities then maybe we see a bounce in nugget and jnug don't chase these things right if if we see a gap up in gold in the morning you know if there's a french election french results come out uh france's results come out negative uh or at least perceived negative uh you know, and this is gapping up big time. Don't don't go chasing the gap. Look for an intraday setup. Um, all right, so let's take a look at uh, a couple of other. You know, one of the things just uh, just uh, happened to show the members over at uh, Alpha Wolf Trading is uh, this this you know Mark Cuban, who I think is a very smart individual, um, was on was on uh, CNBC talking about, you know, artificial intelligence and robotics and, you know, the future of, you know, job creation and so forth and so on. You know, so I, I happen to agree that, you know, I think things do become more automated. And uh, one of the things that I was looking at, now, I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't want to chase this robo up here. Uh, this is a automation index, robotics and automation index, ETF. And, and I think this is something to consider for a long-term hold uh, portfolio addition. Uh, I would like to get it more on a, a pullback to an area of potential price support, maybe close this gap down here at about $32. But if you know, you think about a long-term trend, I do believe that this is one sector that is probably going to be going from the lower left to the upper right for many years to come. 
Um, you know, I just saw an article I posted in the, in the chat room uh, about a robot that actually goes and identifies um, bridges and, you know, takes pictures and scans of bridges. Uh, to, it, 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 and it's not that it does it faster than a team of humans inspecting a bridge, but it does what it what is nice about the robot is all the data that it collects, it um, breaks that down and does the analysis in minutes, whereas humans it takes weeks, right? And I think that is a, a very big issue. Uh, or, or, or not, not an issue. I think that that I think it's a good thing, but I think it is going to create some problems. And I think this is this is a ETF that you definitely want to uh, pay attention to. Um, all right, so let's talk about uh, SMH. Right, uh, this week for earnings, and we'll take a look at earnings in a minute. We have a, a big week for semiconductors reporting. We start out with on semi um, first thing on Monday morning and then we have some other semiconductor names that are reporting throughout the week nvidia being another huge one so uh you know you look at semis now it, it hasn't closed the gap right it hasn't closed the gap but uh it's had a nice pop and it's consolidating right so if nvidia happens to you know crush it then i think you're gonna see smh continue to make new highs now you know look when I say I don't want to be a permable, I don't want to be a permable, but I got, and, and, and this is one of the most hated bull markets in history, right? Uh, people think we're overvalued. People feel as though, uh, and that may be true, but here's the reality of it. Things can stay overvalued for a long time, right? In a bull market, uh, no price is too high because there's the bullish sentiment, the, uh, the, Animal spirit, I guess, is what you say. And, and, and we haven't had anything that is giving us an indication that that is all over, right? It's just not, there's nothing that has flipped the switch and said, it's a whole new game and things are just looking really bad and terrible. Everybody's speculating about bad and terrible things happening. So could they happen? Absolutely. You know, could, could, could I worry about getting hit by a car or struck by lightning, I could. I could worry about that for a long time. The odds of it happening are slim, right? A lot of the things that we worry about in life and in the stock market, whatever, 99, 97% of the stuff never happens. So it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, I'm not, I'm not saying that at some point we're not going to have, you know, a reckoning or, you know, it, it will happen. We will go through a bear market at some point. I am not smart enough to know what event will draw, make that happen. All I can tell you is that right now we are looking incredibly strong from a technical standpoint. All right. Uh, S and P 500. So, you know, we have to pay play what is in front of us. Look at the S&P, made new highs, right? Got out of the upper Bollinger Band. Now we didn't close these gaps. That's a little concerning. Maybe we, we come down and we close these gaps. If we do uh, wind up rolling over a bit, close the gaps, but look, we consolidated and then we broke out on Friday. We're not overbought. I mean, we're getting there, but we're not overbought. Can we go higher? I mean, what happens when the headlines say in the newspaper, uh, S&P 500 all time highs, right? I mean, what happens when that happens? What, what happens to the uh, retail investor that's reading that out there, right? They don't want to miss the boat. So they come piling back into the market or pile into the market. Just right now, things look pretty darn bullish. I think I've already said that, but I'm, I don't know. <laughs> I want to reemphasize that. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of specific sectors here, right? Um, let's take a look. The one thing I would say, though, I you know, look, volatility, keep an eye on volatility. We did get a little uptick. Even though the market was rising on Friday, we didn't get a lot of an uptick, but we did get a little bit of an uptick, which I thought was interesting. I was watching the UVXY, which I actually traded for a little scalp on Friday. I was watching it. Uh, 
rise as the market was rising and I thought that was pretty interesting right so if the market is rising and all of a sudden you see volatility rising then I then then maybe there's something that's that's not right right so just make sure you keep an eye on volatility all right let's take a look at um, oil so another commodity that's getting crushed, right? And got down to, you now 10 was acting as support for a little while. That was a big area for us over at Alpha World Trading to see if it held. Full disclosure, I have started to build a little, you know, a couple of small positions in some oil names that I like for the long term. I bought them in my long term portfolio and I will buy them as they decline. My, my strategy for long term holds Everything is defined by time, right? The amount of time you're willing to wait. So how much money am I willing to tie up and how long am I willing to wait before I make some money? And I'm not going to sell the stock if my intention is to make money. If it falls, I'm going to look for areas of support. Now, some may say that's catching a falling knife. I've caught many falling knives over my investing career. Marvel Entertainment was one that I bought at very, you know, in, in the dollar range. And they wound up being acquired by Disney for um, $55, right? I've bought Falling Knives, but I've had, you know, I've done a lot of due diligence on the company. I understand their product or service. I understand their you know, cash flow, their position. I do the research to make sure that this is something I'm willing to sit on and hold and wait until I make money. So. Uh, USO, I don't think oil is going to go to zero. I really don't. Uh, it might go to $20 a barrel at some point. It could happen. Uh, I don't think that the, the OPEC is going to let that happen, right? And you know, there are some that say, oh, well, OPEC doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, that's a bunch of crap. If OPEC tomorrow decided, hey, you know what? We're not shipping out any more oil. Uh, watch what happens to oil, <laughs> the price, okay? We don't make enough of it here in the States. So anyway, I, oil feels to me like someone was positioned on the wrong side. And, you know, we had a little bit of a bounce in oil and now we've got a pullback. And, you know, we're coming up to an area of potential support. We did pierce the lower Bollinger Band. Could we continue to go lower? We could. Are we oversold? Absolutely. We're oversold. RSI is uh, pretty low. We're starting to curl up, starting to curl up. So, you know, look, I, I think maybe if we get a bounce in oil, you know, it, it was interesting that we had a commodities meltdown and it really didn't pull down the market, right? So if if commodities bounce, wouldn't that then maybe, maybe help the market? Maybe that was what was kind of keeping the market from really busting out. So I don't know. Let's see how it plays out. But it's interesting to me. It's getting to levels where it's interesting for a potential bounce. And we've got some oil names that are reporting this week as well and earnings that could be interesting. The dollar uh, just broke below uh, the 200 day moving average. You know, we've got the Fed who, you know, really didn't say a whole lot, didn't raise the rate, but uh, could have a rate increase coming up in June. We'll see what happens. Uh, the dollar is, uh, you know, which is interesting, the dollar was weak and gold didn't really, I mean, that's, and maybe that's why gold got a little bit of a bounce. You know, if the dollar increases in strength, then I think that creates a problem for commodities. But if the dollar continues to weaken, that should be a good thing for commodities. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Uh, okay. Aerospace defense, you know, one of, one of my favorite sectors. And, you know, here's another sector that did exactly what you would want to see it do. We had a gap up, we pulled back, we closed the gap, we tested the 50 day moving average, we bounced, we broke this trend line, and now we're testing this price resistance. Aerospace defense looks good. Uh, Katos was on a, my list last week. Uh, stocks to watch, happened to like it, the reported earnings, I did not get it, I wanted it, um, I was hoping for a pullback. I watched it all day long, but uh, I didn't get my entry, right? Look at the gap on this thing. 
had a beautiful gap up to nine bucks good earnings good guidance at resistance it's right at price resistance it closed right at the high this could be a red to green type move big volume on friday guidance was good uh i personally would like to own this in my longer term whole long-term portfolio i would like it at eight bucks they did a an offering not too long ago priced it at seven dollars 25 cents i happen to like kato's but i would like it at eight or lower doesn't mean i can't day trade it if it were to pull back maybe do a red to green pull back to around 870 and then bounce take out that nine dollars 925 with some conviction maybe we get a nice little run in kato's worth keeping an eye on it but i like the whole space right i like the whole aerospace and defense uh sector let's take a look at home builders also a nice uh, a sector that i happen to like quite a bit pierce the upper bollinger band pulled back testing an area of support testing this trend line broke above the trend line on friday um you know looks very bullish lower left upper right like the home builders, um, as a matter of fact, I, I took a home builder, uh, BZH, on, uh, after earnings, and I think that this is a good looking setup. It's, it's, it actually has been riding the 200 day, had great, the earnings themselves, if you read the headline, were just so, so. But if you if you really went in and, and viewed the call, they've got a great backlog. They're they're addressing the, their their um, uh, balance sheet, strengthening the balance sheet, and, and I think you know spring season, spring selling season. Uh, I think this is this is a, a good stock for a long term hold or even a swing. But I like the whole space. I like the home builder space. Looks good. Uh, XLB metals and mining or metals and materials right nice pop so another one that had a couple of gaps on the daily we got real close to completely filling the gap matter of fact no looks like we did fill the gap came down filled the gap and bounced and then what do we do uh, I mean this is a pretty nice little bounce closing nearly right at the high of the day on Friday pretty bullish look there on materials XLE, as one could imagine, with oil down, energy sector down, but that did bounce on Friday. We've got stochastics curling up. We've got RSI starting to curl up. That's why I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards a potential bounce within the space we'll see, or within the commodity. We'll see what happens next week. Financials, we already discussed. Industrials, you know, did not fill the gap. Didn't come down and test the 50-day. But, you know, industrial's looking pretty darn bullish, right? We pierced the upper Bollinger Band, pulled back a little bit, got back in the Bollinger Band, and now we're grinding our way higher. Uh, XLU, this has been trading within two, you know, this area, these two areas of support and resistance for a while. It's building out a hell of a base. We've got some utilities that are reporting this week uh, that could give this sector a boost. I mean, this could be a heck of a flat top breakout. Um, but, you know, likely going to have some resistance right there around 52. XLV Healthcare has been in, in a fan, you know, it's it's at an area of price resistance right now. 76 bucks, 76.50. If we can take out 76.50 with conviction, I think, uh, you know, we continue to move higher. Look, it, it's consolidating right now. It's working off the overbought condition. And, but you've got a... You know, you're above the 50-day moving average. You're above the 200-day. Healthcare looks pretty darn good. Maybe we're putting in a little cup here. Maybe we'll do a cup with handle. but still looking pretty good there for healthcare. Uh, consumer discretionary looking pretty darn good as well, right? Broke out over 80. 88 was actually the, the spot of uh, real significant resistance. Broke out over that. Pierce the upper Bollinger Band pulling back. Now, it appears as though 89 is trying to hold as support. Now, there is a gap to fill back down to $88. Maybe that happens. Maybe we continue to drift lower and fill that out. But uh, pretty nice look on consumer discretionary. Metals and mining. 
not so much, right? Not looking so hot. And, and that's probably uh, has to do with it. Well, not probably has to do with the commodities, right? And the meltdown there. We did get completely out of the upper bullish band. We got a little bit of a bounce. Maybe we do get a snapback. Uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see, but then let's see how it reacts here at the 200 day moving average. Let's see how it, how it reacts at this trend line, right? Um, I'm not crazy about this space. Could you, tr you know, do a quick scalp trade on it? Sure, but I would not be, until you take out that 200 day, you take out that trend line with conviction. Uh, you know, it, to me, that's just a day trading opportunity. Uh, oil and expiration, a little bit of a bounce, just like XM or XLE. And then even retail, look at retail. Now this is, our, this is my least favorite sector. I'm gonna tell you that right now. I don't like trading retail. I'm not good at trading retail, uh, but we have a huge week next week for retail, <laughs> right? We've got a tremendous amount of earnings and we'll look at that in a minute, but there's a lot of retail names reporting next week. And if they surprise, if they give good earnings reports, then, you know, maybe we see uh, retail break out, right? And, and that could be good. I mean, that could be great for the overall market. On the flip side, if retail, you know, reports dismal numbers and gives dismal guidance, then, you know, we could see retail break down. So, uh, not crazy about retail, but worth keeping an eye on, right? But overall, just looking at what a lot of the indexes and sectors have done, they did exactly what we wanted them to do, right? They, they either closed the gap and bounced, they pulled back to a significant moving average, like the 100 EMA or the 50 day and they bounced. So, and they broke over trend lines and you know, they're well within the Bollinger Band. So things just look pretty darn bullish out there. All right, let's take a look and see what's coming up next week for economic data. Don't have a whole lot, not like last week, right? Last week we had a lot of stuff going on. We still got some stuff. We got small business optimism. We've got the JOLTS report, which is job openings report. We've got, uh, Mortgage applications, uh, petroleum status report, which is always interesting. Uh, we've got several Fed speakers speaking next week, so you know that's always a wild card. We've got Warren Buffett's thing happening this weekend, right? So that'll be another thing that'll be talked about next week, um, whether his tone was positive or negative, and and you know specific stocks he may talk about could have some catalysts there, so. That Warren Buffett thing will be all over uh, on Monday, and whatever tone that is could influence the markets. We've got Bloomberg, Bloomberg Consumer Comfort Index. We've got jobless claims, PPI, retail sales Friday, and uh, consumer sentiment. So we've got some economic data, not anything really huge going on next week. All right, so let me clear that out. Now let's take a look at the earnings picture for next week. A nice broad array of stocks. Now, uh, I hi so you know I go through these every every week and I take a look at the charts and I, you know, they may be companies that I'm already familiar with, um, that I like technically, or they may be companies that. Um, I'm interested to see what they report, not no, not so much for a trade in the name, maybe I don't like the technical setup, but I'm still interested maybe for how it will impact the sector or, um, you know, maybe if it presents an opportunity after the earnings for a, a, a decent trade opportunity. So I go through and I take a look at all the charts and then I, I mark the ones that I'm interested in for potential trades with a green box and I mark the ones that I'm just interested in with the black box. And uh, this week, like I said, on semi is one that I'm, I'm pretty interested in. It's got an interesting looking setup on the daily, HCMP, another one. You know, this is a sector that's been beaten down, specialty and generic sector. You've got several specialty and generic names reporting, Horizon, Endo, Mylan. I mean, there's uh, several names within that sector that are going to be reporting Teva, which I have a small position in Teva, nothing big, small. It's in my long-term hold. 
But um, Horizon, if they report and have a good move, Endo could move in sympathy. So could Teva. So could some of these other names that are reporting. So worth keeping an eye on. Why? Why? I think is kind of interesting too. I don't think I put it on my list. Um, I didn't put all the ones that. Have, hold on a second. All right, but he finally got it out of his system. All right, so um, where was I? Where was I? So there are some names in here that uh, I'm definitely interested in. We've got a broad array of names reporting. JD.com, Kite Pharma, uh, Pandora, CBI, Chicago Bridge and Iron. I'm very interested in that one because I'm interested in that whole engineering construction space. Um, Tesoro. Right, I mean, Plug Power, which has had an amazing run after a little announcement with uh, Amazon, even Valiant, right? It, it, if they were to surprise the street, maybe maybe Valiant becomes a trade opportunity after that. Walt Disney, Priceline, NVIDIA, talked about that one already, big one. Um, Yelp is interesting, has a decent looking setup on the daily, um, could be, you know, Mazor, Mazor Robotics, this is another one that's had an amazing run. I like it. I'm not looking at, I, I, I want to see how the earnings are, right? It's had an amazing run. Maybe it's gotten ahead of itself. Wendy's got a beautiful looking chart. We'll go through that one in a minute. Kemet, another one. I mean, Snap reports, right? Big one. Uh, am I going to trade Snap? Probably not. Um, I, it's a thick stock, 400,000 shares. I'll look at it. Maybe. I don't know. Omeros, Radiant, Symantec, uh, Gastar. There's just a lot of names reporting next week that I'm very interested in. Biosept, Petrobras, uh, CGIX. Um, that's it. Like I said, I didn't put all of these on my stocks to watch list for next week. Um, you know, I've got something like 30 names here and I, I you know, only I, I don't want to make this too long of a video and it's already a uh, half hour long so let's get into the list of stocks to watch for next week and uh, we'll start out with the CPSI and so you know this is uh, over here is right here is uh, a list of stocks that one of my one of my pro members uh, sends me every week. And um, this is the kind of thing that we try to teach over at Alpha Wolf Trading, right? Is uh, I don't care if it's a day trade, swing trade, or long-term hold. Uh, what I try to teach is that you have a plan for each and every trade. Now, I, I put out my own trade plans on stocks that I took. These are homes I took out. I put out a trade plan so that uh, people understand within the... Uh, you know, within Alpha Wolf Trading, why I took a stock, where I'm looking for it to go, what my risk reward is, and uh, my strategy for the trade, right? Is it a long-term hold? Is it a swing? Is it a day trade? Well, day trades, I don't post. I don't post day trades, and the reason why I don't post them, minutes matter. Why am I going to post something if I'm going to try and take 10%, 10, cent, 10 or 20 cents out of it by the time I buy it, then write up the post, then say I just got in it, I might be getting out of it and I don't want somebody buying the shares that I'm selling and then have the thing go down and say, oh man, you screwed me, right? I don't, I don't want to do that. So, uh, so anyway, this is uh, one, this, this particular one is one that was sent out by uh, one of the pro members and here's his trade plan, CPSI which has got an interesting look, right? Consolidated for a bit, nice volume pop on Friday. Uh, came up right into resistance of long-term trend line, looking for an entry potentially at 28.90, which is which is an area of potential support, right? It was resistance. Now, if let's say we get a red open, pulls down to 29, we could assume that maybe this is an area where it might find some support somewhere around 2890. I think this is, you know, the top of the wicks. Maybe we look at, you know, 
and I'm just going to throw this out, Peter. Maybe you look at 28.54, right? 28.50, somewhere in there. Nice, uh, you know, I find round, round, round numbers and half numbers to be, you know, 28.50. Uh, a lot of times can act as support. So could be an, a better entry if it pulls back to 28.50 and holds. But um, let's take a look. 28.90, stop 27.90. So risking a buck. First target, 31.50. Second target 32 set 37.20. Wow, that's a uh, that's a heck of a second target right there. Uh, nice break Friday with close 200 above the 200 EMA. Looking for uh, red to green entry on retest of the 200 EMA. Okay, makes sense. Uh, on a retest of 200 EMA, given the stop point, first target is, is the high of Friday's candle. Second target may be a bit aggressive, but it is the bottom of the gap fill. Earnings already passed. No recent insider activity. Now, insider activity is something that I happen to focus on quite a bit. And I'm going to give you an example of why insider activity is so can be such a really important indicator. All right, uh, let's take a look at CPSI here. So here's the gap, 3727. I see what he's talking about, right? Gap to fill on the daily. It is testing this long-term trend line. That would be a concern for me, right? Uh, it had a false breakout above that long-term trend line. But decent volume on, on, on Friday. Only 8.4 million shares in the float in a big short interest in this name. So it can get a bit squeezy. Um, you know, I'm the 200 day, I'm looking at 200 day at 2640. And maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong, but that's where I'm seeing it as the 200 day. Two, oh, EMA, I got it, I got it, my bad. All right, so he's looking at the 200 EMA, I've got the 200 SMA, so. I'm sure it lines up with what he's talking about. Uh, I think this is a, a really good looking trade plan, right? Risk reward 2.6 to 1. So you want at least 2 to 1. Not all of my trades are 2 to 1, uh, especially if I'm starting to build a position uh, in a name like Beezer Homes, right? I started to build a position. I have a, a, a larger size that I would like to have for a full position, but I've started building in the name. I, Look, I bought it after it popped. I bought it on a pullback to an area of potential support, but then I was looking at the fact that it could pull back further, right? And if it pulled back further, I would want to add to my position and uh, build it out. So sometimes when I first set up a trade plan and I take my initial entry, it's giving me a, a risk reward ratio that's not all that great. But as I build that position and it comes down and I and I and I and I uh, readjust the trade plan, it uh, it all works out. So anyway, uh, CS CPSI Peter, I like it. Good good trade setup. Uh, definitely worth watching. All right, T E L L. This is another one that uh, Peter sent in. Risk entry. Okay, so his entry on this one is eight dollars and eighty cents stop is eight twenty five all right so I'm trying to identify how he's pulling up with the 880 and it, my guess is maybe looking at the the 200 day here or area of price support let's just read it uh nice bounce off the 200 ema on Friday, looking for a pullback. 200 EMA for entry. Stop is under the averages. First target is resistance at the first pivot point in March. And the second target is top of the congestion. It still has a bunch of moving averages to get over that are sloping down. This is a bounce play for a swing. Earnings are May 12th. Director and 10% owner, 825,000 shares, but not clear on the price or the details involved. Okay, so there was some insider buying. Oil and gas name, which is under pressure. 
if oil gets a bounce, maybe this one gets a bounce. I mean, it's at an area where it could potentially bounce. I like it. You know, stochastics are starting to curl up. Uh, relative strength curling up. I think you have a pretty clear uh, trade plan. It's worth keeping an eye on. T-E-L-L. -L. I mean, this thing was just 20 bucks not too long ago. So worth keeping an eye on it. You know, and you have a clearly defined first target is 10 bucks. Right, I get it. Right up into resistance. See, that's where he's looking at. We acted as support here and now likely to act as resistance. He's looking to get it on a pull. So, not bad. Now, this thing could take out 10. It's only got 5.3 million shares in the float, 38% short interest. This could create a, a day trading opportunity as well. Takes out 10 with conviction. You get a nice bounce in oil. There could be a good trade day trade there. So, worth keeping an eye on that one. GST, so this is uh, reporting earnings on, I believe, Thursday after the close. So, you know, it just goes with the theme of potentially um, so this looks like a, 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 a fund. Aries Management picked up some shares at a a dollar forty-seven looks like what two million five hundred and forty-five thousand shares or something like that, or is it twenty-five million? I don't know. It's a big number. Um, I'm looking at GST. So you've got some some insider activity there. You've got stochastics which are curling up. You closed right at the two hundred day moving average. You've got RSI picking up. You've got earnings coming up. Now, look, this may move into earnings, come up into this trend line, report earnings, and if they're bad, boom, it goes lower, right? Uh, fund buys. I think that was 2 million shares. I'll have to look. shares uh, at what 1.47 is that what that was hold on that was reported nine hours ago <clears throat> so let me take a look at something here real quick so like I said, this is reporting on Thursday after the close. Twenty five million shares. Is what was purchased. So uh, they're a ten percent owner. Right, just looking at that so uh, pretty interesting pretty interesting I think it's uh, worth keeping an eye on maybe it runs into earnings and you get out before earnings come out uh, if they report better than expected earnings maybe this thing goes on a on a rip but know that uh, we know that there's been some significant buying there so worth keeping an eye on it for the technical setup uh, and see how it does after earnings are reported. Okay, let's move on to the next one. I gotta get I gotta get cruising here. It's gonna be a long video. AXGN. So AXGN has got a really nice look. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is flirting with all time highs. It is. Uh, so you got blue sky overhead, right? It's been in a very nice uptrend. Uh, pulled back a little bit. Got a nice little bounce on Friday with some decent volume. 27 million shares in the float. 5% short interest. Uh, flirting with the $13 holla. Flirting with all time highs. I think this has got a really good looking setup and worth keeping an eye on for potential continuation. 
Uh, maybe you get a red to green move, right? A pullback to about $12.50, 12 dollars 30 uh, and then you get a bounce to take out 13 could be a day trading opportunity um, I don't know much about the company to, to consider it for a swing but you've got you know you're above all the moving averages you've got an upward sloping 50 day an upward sloping 200 day really looks really really looks pretty good so AXGN worth keeping an eye on for a potential trade Kirk's we're looking at a potential flat top breakout here now I will. It's our. It, I think we had news the other day. It's it's piercing the upper Bollinger Band. It's at this area of price resistance. You know, it's above all the moving averages. Here's the other thing I like about it. it just broke above the 200 day, the 50. So you got the golden cross right there, right? Um, good volume picked up on Friday. Could get a red to green move. Maybe we consolidate here. What would be really nice to see is it consolidate with some really tight candles, right? Really tight candles right here at 650 and then break, right? Have a night, build up some energy before taking out that, that level. But, you know, look, it was kind of building up energy here and it's now just broken, but it needs to get through that 650 with conviction. I think if we get through 650 with conviction, you maybe get up the gap fill. So it means up to about $7.27. So worth keeping an eye on Kirk's, maybe for a day trade, maybe for a uh, swing. If you're comfortable swinging bios, I don't recommend it. Uh, but some people, you know, some people are comfortable with that. 27% short interest, 80 million shares in the float. You know, I didn't talk about the float on uh, GST. Just want to go over that real quick. 152 million shares, which is still not real thick, especially when you've got a stock that's priced, in the, you know, in the basically the dollar range right and um not a big short interest there either on gst all right ag so look uh carter worth i brought him up earlier he's thinking about a bounce in silver so you know look i looked at silver slv you could look to play the etf or you could also look to play some of the names within the silver space ag is one of them um, and i would be only looking at these for a day trade or a short-term swing with some lottos if I were able to catch it for a day trade and lock in some profit. Maybe then I hold some lottos, see if I get some follow through. But you've got a lot of resistance overhead, a lot of moving aver av average resistance overhead. But we are potentially in an area where it would make sense to bounce, right? I mean, we came down to seven bucks. It bounced off of there on Friday. So if we do get a bounce in commodities, if we do get a bounce in silver, maybe we get a bounce, a continuation of a bounce in AG just have it on the radar only if silver bounces paas is another one uh that is at an area where it could make sense to find some support and bounce right um so look for it to take out the trend line but as i said we do have a lot of moving average resistance overhead so day trades that's what i'm looking at meat so it's funny peter had this on his list I got it on my list. Uh, I like the potential flat top breakout setup here. It's got earnings on, I think, Monday after the close. Now, I think they just bought a company, too. They just did an acquisition, which could uh, impact their results. But, you know, what do we got here? We got a golden cross. We got the 50-day breaking above the 200-day moving average. We've got an area of potential price resistance. We've got the $6 holla, the six roll, round number roll. I love round number rolls, right? Um, so, it, and it, it's got a good looking technical setup. So we've got 58 million shares in the float, 11% short interest. It's got a small float. And uh, you know, if it reports a good number and gives good guidance, you could see a pretty nice pop in MEET. Canaccord, Canaccord Genuity gave it a ten dollar price target in March, so let's see what earnings present. And I want to make sure I'm accurate here. It is Monday after the close, right there. Meet me. So <clears throat> definitely interested in that one. We'll see how it acts Monday. You know, it just worked off the overbought condition. Let's see how it acts. But let's take a look at Peter's trade plan. Five seventy entry. 540 stop 
First target, 630. Second target, 688. Risk reward, 2 to 1. Okay, so oh, looking at a gap fill here at the 688, basically, 690. All right, uh, so there's a gap there on the daily that could potentially fill. Let's take a look. 570, 540 stops, so risking 30 cents uh, to make 60 cents uh, on this first target. And then a second target, you know, so you scale out at 630, right? You hit, you hit that first target, you scale out half of your position or quarter of your position, depending on how well the stock is acting. You scale out half. And then you let some of it run to see if you get that second target at 688. Looking at this two ways for a swing, would love a pullback to 570, which is previous resistance, and hopefully should now support for a day trade. I would look at look for a flat top breakout above 610. Stochastics are curling back up. All the M&A's uh, moving averages are sloping up. Probably will wait on a swing until after earnings, which is Monday. No recent insider activity. Great plan. Great trade plan. I love it. And uh, I like the setup. I mean, we're definitely on the same page. You know, look, if it pulls back, uh, you know, if earnings are good and they give good guidance and this thing pulls back, right, to the 200-day and the 50-day moving average and you find support there, Man, that's, to me, that's worth the risk, right? Worth the risk to take take it there. All right. Uh, let's keep moving forward here. I got a lot of stocks to get through. MTSI. This is definitely, this is um, Peters. Pulling back to the 200-day. I mean, it's just the first thing that I notice is it's right at an area of potential price and moving average support. That's a major moving average. Uh, looks like, okay, just this automatic sell, that's nothing. Uh, so we've got a potential area of price support and a bounce spot, right? Look at that. This was a big area of resistance and then it acted as support. And here we are back at support. We pierced the lower Bollinger band and we actually bounced. Stochastics are starting to curl up. And RSI is starting to curl up. So let's take a look at this plan. 44.10 is looking for an entry. So basically, he's looking at real close to the 200. I'll bet that's the 200 EMA that he's looking at. I don't have that on here, but let me take a look. Uh, 44.10, stop. 43.50, so risking 60 cents. First target, 47.50. Target, second target, 49. Wow, some aggressive targets right there. Risk reward 5.6 to 1. This is a bounce play off the 200 day moving average. Looking for, for an entry there with the stop below, giving a little wiggle room just in case. First target is the top of the previous congestion, beginning of the year. Second target is the 50% retracement for the most recent pivot point. Earnings already came out. Semis are still strong. This, as in everything else this would be a swing no recent insider activity i like it right but let's see what semis do let's see we've got some semis reporting next week so let's see what they do but not bad i mean this is a pretty decent looking trade plan right here <coughs> good risk reward clearly defined this is what you need to do if you're new to trading you should have one of these trade plans for every trade you take just buying something off the cuff because somebody else said that they bought it is a recipe for disaster. So, uh, cat, or no, 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 parts, PRTS, I, full dis I don't own this. I've played it many times. Uh, it's a low floater, right? To 18 million shares in the float. Uh, we got a nice looking setup. I came across it on Saturday or not Saturday, Friday. Uh, during market hours and it's really got an interesting looking setup and what do we got going on here the golden cross we got the 50-day crossing above the 200 day um, we've got a nice tight consolidation after a pop above the bollinger band we came up into price resistance we got a flat top breakout potentially happening here the issue i have is that it's a little overbought right it's a little overbought but things can stay overbought they report earnings 
May 10th, Tuesday, I believe. So, I don't, Wednesday, Wednesday. So, hard to take this ahead of earnings, right? But um, it does have a sweet looking setup and could be a day trade opportunity if you get some volume and traded 221,000 shares, which is a lot for this stock. You gotta have some liquidity there, so, you know, I mean, it can, have, it can trade very minimal amounts of shares, 41,000 shares. You got to be careful here. May have to wait till after earnings. Um, you know, ideally for me, you know, if I could get it at 350 or 345, if they report good earnings, maybe it pulls back and then you get a bounce, right? Uh, 345, 50 day moving average could be interesting somewhere in that area, but you got to see some volume. If it takes out four dollars heading into earnings, I would be, you know, I would be out before earnings, and I would be locking in profit, maybe hold some lottos, but that's about it. But potential day trade, potential swing after earnings, if earnings are good and guidance is good, and the stock pulls back, right? Then potentially a uh, a swing trade or even a long term hold consideration. On Reports on Monday morning, semiconductor name, stochastics curling up. Uh, you know, actually just kind of holding on to the 100 EMA. It's, you know, a, above the 200 day, which is sloping up nicely. It's below the 50 day. So it needs to reclaim the 50 day moving average. It needs to take out that trend line. Could have some resistance up around 15, which is only 50 cents to the upside. So, you know, I've got to wait and see how earnings come out on this. This is a thick stock, 415 uh, million shares in the float. So probably more of a swing or um, a long-term hold consideration than it is a, a, um, a day trade, right? But I'm looking at the fact that it's right at an area of potential price resistance. You've got the $14 holiday support. You've got the trend line as support, right? We've, we've come down, we've test, tested that trend line, bam, we bounced. We came down, bam, we bounced. Bam, we bounced, right? So let's see what earnings do. Let's see if we bounce here again. Uh, and then if it takes out $16 or 1620, let me just, I gotta back this out and see. So this is not all time highs, right? But, uh, 16, 1650 is a big area. It looks like there's a gap over here and that's on the month. Oh, so oops, sorry. That was on a monthly time frame. So let's just take a look. 17 would be a big area to try and get through for this OMN, all right? <clears throat> on a monthly time frame, but I worth keeping an eye on it and, and it could give us a hint of the rest of the sector. So that's why I have it on my radar. HIMX, another semiconductor name that is reporting on Thursday before the open. There's been some option activity here. You know, look, we're going to have several semis that are going to report before this company reports. It's not one of my favorite looking setups. I mean, it is interesting. Um, you know, maybe this is an area of support where we can bounce from. This is a, we had a little double top up here. Uh, it's below the moving average. There's a lot of resistance overhead. So it's going to have to try and get through all of that. You know, $6 could be an area of potential support. I'm just I, I'm interested to see how this reacts off the other semiconductor names in this as they report and see if maybe this gets some action heading into earnings and it's likely going to find some resistance somewhere around eight dollars right around all this moving average congestion so potential day trade opportunity maybe a swing i don't know but i think it's worth keeping an eye on himx hzmp uh is is look it's been in a downtrend for a long time and i you know there's some pretty aggressive price targets out there on this one i think 18 22 something like that um uh, you know consolidating here it's been consolidating uh if they report better than expected earnings give good guidance i think you could see a nice pop in this name 
we take out that trend line, I think potentially you go up and test the 200 day moving average right around $17.50. So worth keeping an eye on this one. They report earnings on Monday before the open and that could set the tone for the rest of the names in that space. ENDP, VRX, I mean, we'll see. We'll see how this plays out, but I think it's worth paying close attention to HZMP. CENX, uh, Peter sent this one in. I can see that we are sitting right on top of the 50 EMA SMA. Good area for a potential bounce. Right? This is a space that has not been, uh, but not been uh, real strong recently, but uh, oversold. And let's see what his trade plan is for this. Entry 1290, so just under, just below, uh, just below 13, stop 1255, first target 1460. So I think the first target could be a little aggressive, Peter. 14, consider 14, 1399, scale out before it hits 14. Right? Round numbers, they always, always, always tend to act as resistance a lot of the time, right? So maybe consider taking some off, off the table at $13.99, $13.95, somewhere in that area. Second target, 16. 16 is a pretty aggressive target as well. Um, am I missing something here? No. Uh, 1550, right? Maybe look at that as your next area of. Uh, your second target, you want to hold some lottos after that. So looking for a day trade entry, bounce off the 20 day moving average and a stop below the 100 at moving average. Earnings already passed, nice flag on the daily with stochastic curving back up, no insider activity. I, I, I think probably too aggressive on both of those targets. You know, let's say you get, uh, th you know, 14, 1395 or something, and then maybe look for that second target at, at around uh, $15 or so. Uh, 4.8 to 1. I mean, that looks good on paper, risk reward, but I think probably too aggressive. All right, but good looking setup. Good looking setup. Above the 200 day. Looks good. I like it. SSRI, just another silver name. If silver bounces, this could be interesting, right? We pierced the lower Bollinger Band, we came down to an area of potential price support. Could get a bounce. Just another name to consider for a bounce if silver goes. BITI, BITA, this is nice. Nice big pop on good volume. Got out of the upper Bollinger Band, sold off, working its way back to an area of price support. It's beautiful. Above the 200 day, above the 50 day, got a golden cross. This is sent in by Peter. That's beautiful. It's got a beautiful setup. Let's take a look at it. 2680 entry. Right, I get it. Uh, stop 2630. First target 2875. Second target 30. Risk reward 1.3 to 1. Nice pullback to the 20 moving average with bounce stochastics curling up, looking for an entry at 20 moving average stop below that. Entry is previous resistance support, hopefully support. First target is first congestion area. Second target is an even $30 holla. <laughs> earnings are on 11th, the May 11th. Okay, so they got earnings coming up. And that makes this a little more, a little more challenging. So would not want to hold through earnings. Agree to that. Agree to that. Don't want to hold it through earnings. So 2850 looks like an area of potential resistance. And is that, I would look at 2850, <coughs> maybe the first place to scale. And it may not go anywhere until it gets its earnings report, right? Oof, looks like they lost some money. So this is got this is interesting. Stochastics are curling. You know, look, I like the setup. Probably got to wait on earnings, man. 
Probably got to wait on earnings. And then, you know, look, if earnings are good, it's going to be a gapper, right? I mean, it's at a really interesting spot, though. So maybe, you know, heading into earnings, I don't, let's see, they paid May 11th. So that is um, Thursday. So it's tough. That thing could pull back to 26 bucks. That could be an interesting spot, too, the 50 day moving average. But. Look, I, I think you got a good trade plan there. And if it, get, it breaks that trend line with some conviction prior to earnings, take it for a quick day trade. All right, KOPN, uh, full disclosure. Uh, I owned this. I just sold it. I sold everything I had in KOPN. Coming up into earnings. Now, look, semiconductor, and they're in a space that I really like, AR, VR. It's had a tremendous run. I actually just sold this thing out. I made 122% or something like that in this stock. Um, I had it for a swing, long-term hold. I took the profits because I was trying not to be a greedy pig. Uh, this thing could continue to run, and I could wind up jumping back in it. I may regret that sell. Um, but I was looking at it like this. If they disappoint on earnings, it's going to pull back. I will get an opportunity to reload or, or get back into my position. Um, you know, it's it's in a nice uptrend, lower left to upper right. I, 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 I didn't really have a reason to completely sell everything other than the fact that it's right at a big area of potential resistance. And I'm looking at that on the weekly time frame. I took the profit, okay? because of the fact that it has earnings on deck and we are at a very big area of potential resistance on a weekly time frame. So, you know, if they report and they disappoint and it pulls back to $3.50 or it pulls back to three bucks, I'm going to look to rebuild my position in it. Um, so <clears throat> it's in the semi space I've, and it does have a nice looking setup. It takes out 450 with conviction. I'm not going to take it on the pop above 450. I will look for it to pull back to 440. I'll look for that area that was resistance to then act as support, and that will be where I look to get back in the stock. Okay? So uh, I like KOPN. I'm watching it to see what happens next week. Wow, another one, Peter. Good job, dude. It's got a nice look, too. This is another one Peter sent in, but KOPN. Worth keeping an eye on, potential swing, long-term hold, or day trade opportunity uh, there, depending on how the earnings come in. And I'm not sure what day they report, but make sure you you check that out before you go getting involved in KOPN. Truck, man <coughs> truck manufacturing, WNC, 2165. So, you know, it's got the 50-day here at 21 bucks. 21 could be a really good entry point. Uh, stochastics are starting to curl, but you know they got a really clearly defined area. You got you got price support potentially, and you got the 50-day at 21. So that would that's kind of more where I would be interested in taking it. But uh, 21.65 entry, 20.65 stop. First target 22.80. Second target 24. Risk reward. 1.1 to 1. So not a great risk reward with your current entry, right? But if you were to take it at 21, keep the other parameters, you got a better risk reward set up there. So worth considering, right? Or uh, yeah, I mean, it's, I think that's worth considering. Just change those up a little bit. All right. So Looking for entry at 20 EMA, also previous resistance. Stop is below the 50 EMA. First target is first pivot. Second target is the previous highs. These are blue skies for this stock. One so we'll have to save some lottos. Earnings were strong and already passed. All right, so you got a strong earner, earnings winner that was up four days in a row, right? I mean, just think about. It went from 19 and change up to 24 in like three days, four days. So pull back to 21 area that was acting as resistance should act as support. I think 
you know, I like it better as an entry right there. And then you put your stop maybe at, um, maybe 2049 or something like that, right? Just below 2050. But good looking, good looking chart, good looking setup on WNC. Good job, Peter. Good eye. Uh, KEM, I love this one. Uh, so 45 million shares in the float, consolidating, reporting earnings. It is overbought right now. Reporting earnings on Wednesday before the open. I mean, it's got a good looking setup, right? Let me back this out to the weekly. So, you know, I mentioned that one of the things that I pay close attention to teach at Alpha Wolf Trading is insider buying. And I've got a couple of tools that I use that I teach everybody to where to look for that stuff and, and uh, you know, how to identify between a grant and an award or a stock option and actually really reaching into your pocket and buying shares. But, you know, the CEO bought shares of this stock at a dollar fifty, when the, everybody and their brother would have said, "Why are you buying a falling knife? This is an ugly stock. This is garbage." You know, look, insiders buy because they feel as though things have gotten overdone, and they think that their stock or their company is undervalued. And I'm not talking about just buying with a little token buy. I'm talking about stepping up and buying a significant amount of shares. Now, buy it at a buck fifty. Where is it at today? Twelve dollars. Pretty nice return, right? Pretty nice return. And um, <laughs> pretty pretty nice return. So. Anyway, looking at it now as as setup, now it is overbought, like I said. Got earnings coming up. It's above the 200 day, it's above the 50 day moving average. It's been in consolidation mode. Look for it to take out $12.50. And if it takes out $12.50 with some conviction, you have to say, well, where is the next area of real significant resistance? Probably right around, well, actually, let's say, 13, 12, 1350 or so takes out 1350. Maybe we get all the way up to $16, but, uh, not too bad. Not uh, pretty nice looking chart on K E M 45 million shares of float, small float. So, uh, traded 466,000 shares, decent liquidity there. But like I said, it is overbought. So probably have to wait till earnings, but worth keeping an eye on Wendy's hot, hot. All right, nice big run. Now, it may have ran into earnings already. If earnings don't really impress, they have earnings on Wednesday before the open, right? If they don't really impress, knock it out of the park, this may pull back, right? But if it's a good earnings report and good guidance, but it's just not enough and it pulls back, where does it get interesting for a swing? Maybe on a pullback to about $14, right? Pull back to 14, see if that acts as support. You got the 50 day moving average there. You know, you've got good earnings. You've just got people taking some profit. Nothing wrong with that. Look and see if maybe you can get an entry for a swing. 184 million shares in the float, 7% short interest. Now this could break out heading into earnings, right? Could break out, take out, you know, 15, 50, go up to 16 bucks, test that. <clears throat> but then if it did that, I would be out of it before earnings came because uh, they'd have to absolutely crush it to justify the run. Cat. So uh, this is sent by Peter. Right at an area of price support, 99 bucks. 99.25 entry, stop 98.75. First target 175, second target 103. Big, thick stock, 588 million shares, half a billion shares in this. This is more of a swing or a uh, long-term hold consideration. Gap, great earnings gap in April. Stock just filled the gap. Okay, I'm looking at it, it filled the gap to here. It didn't fill the entire gap though, right? 
the gap comes all the way down to $97, 50-day moving average. So 50 EMA, right? We've got some price support in that $97. So I know it's there's some support here, but it didn't fill the gap. The gap is down here to 97. And maybe that's, you know, maybe that's a better consideration um, for entry. Just if, if this breaks down, if this area of support breaks down, then you look for it here at 97. All right, great earnings and 20 EMA, first target, eight EMA, second target, top of the recent congestion. After earnings, no recent insider activity. I mean, I probably like this better at an entry of 97, but it may not happen. This could act as support right where you're at. I think you stick to your trade plan. I'm just uh, throwing out what I see, uh, but not bad. MCHP. Another one, Peterson in, entry 74.50, stop 73.50, first target 76.50, second target 77.30. Nice looking stock, lower left, upper right, semiconductor name. All right, nice uptrend. Pull back after flat top breakout, 74.75. Uh, high pin candle in February. Second target is recent high chart is flagging nicely with stochastics curling back up. Earnings are on Tuesday. You gotta wait till after earnings on this one. Trade Monday until earnings after earnings. CEO sold around 50,000 shares at 74.30. Yeah, I don't like seeing that. It's not a lot. Depends on what he still owns owns after that sell. But yeah, I. I probably, I mean, maybe for a quick scalp, it's got 209 million shares in the float, 10% short interest. I probably would just wait till after earnings on that one. EXK, just another silver play, right? Just another silver play. If silver bounces, I mean, it's at an area of potential support, takes out that trend line. Maybe you get a scalp, quick day trade there. OMER <coughs> reports on um, Wednesday after the close, you know, it, it could be a double top right here, right? It could be a double top right there. So I'm not super crazy about it. Um, you know, if they report something spectacular in earnings, it's approaching an area of potential support at 1445. Probably got to wait till earnings before messing around with this. It's only got 36 million shares in the float, 25% short interest. Worth having on the radar. I certainly would not take it before earnings. And like I said, there is a potential double top there. Uh, BIOC, this one, you know, it's at an area of support. It's at the 200 day. They report on Thursday after the close. Uh, 21 million shares in the float, 18% short interest that they report. It can be a pop and flopper, right? It can be a pop and flopper. So you don't want to chase this thing at all. Um, but it could get some action heading into earnings, right? Could get some action. Maybe we get a two test heading into earnings. And if it reports something spectacular in earnings, maybe it takes out two bucks. And we go up here and, and test somewhere around 275 or so. Worth keeping an eye on it for a day trade potential opportunity there. CVGI, hot, hot, hot. Another one, Peter. Good job. Worked off the overbought condition. Pulling back. You know, I don't know where his entry is, but I'm looking at continue to drift down and pull back to about 725 seven dollars somewhere in that area I think he's probably looking somewhere closer though all right entry 810 so eight bucks looking for eight to act as support I would suggest trying to get it as close to eight as possible right but then if we look at it here 750 right there's this area of support there and maybe the 50 EMA will be in the 750 area 750 because I think a better entry for me uh, see if it continues to pull back but uh, 795 stops first target 870 second target 940 risk reward four to one earnings were this past Friday pretty much non-event for the stock looking for an entry at 20 EMA so that traded some decent earnings or some decent shares on Friday. Uh, 
uh, stochastics curling back up. First target is high of Friday's candle. Second target is previous high. No recent insider activity. Uh, you know, look, if they just reported Friday and this is the way the stock reacted, I almost think you're probably looking at it continuing to move lower. And maybe it becomes more compelling at seven, close to seven dollars. You know, nice round number. Look at it there. Worth keeping an eye on. Only 24 million shares in the float. Could be a day trade. Could be a swing if you're comfortable taking it at 650 or six dollars. Right? Got some. We got some good price support in that area. So maybe this has gotten a little bit ahead of itself. You got a big cup. There looks like, I don't know. I mean, it's a decent plan. It's just not showing me anything yet. I think you're probably going to see this continue to drift lower. RLGT, I'm almost done here, folks. I know this is a long, almost a two-hour video. I apologize, but hey, are you serious about wanting to be a trader? Are you serious about finding good opportunities? If you are, then you're going to watch the whole damn video. If not, you're not that committed. So... Uh, <laughs> all right, RLGT. Uh, this has got to be. I think no, it's not. It's not his. It's mine. And I think I might have transposed. Oh no, that's right. Okay. What do we got going on? Oh, they have earnings. That's right. They they have earnings Wednesday after the close. Above the moving averages, right? At an interesting area. Maybe we're working on building out a big old cup. That could be happening. Right? Um, it looks like there's been some 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 uh, accumulation going on in the name. Now, I'm probably going to wait until earnings. If, if they disappoint on earnings... I'm looking for maybe a pullback to an area of support, right, at around 550. If they beat on earnings and they take out the $7 holla, then maybe we get a pop up into the $8 range where then we have a completed cup, right? So uh, worth keeping an eye on our LGT uh, for their earnings. It could move into earnings. Or we could just continue to drift down here. I mean, it's, it's, you know, let's see if six acts as support. Six has been acting as support. Let's see if it continues to act as support. But it's worth keeping an eye on this bad boy. All right. Uh, heading into earnings. I think it could get interesting. And what was the, hold on a second. Let me back up. Uh, 37 million shares in the float. Tiny float. And it looks like they're making money. So it's over the, you know, rising 50 day, rising 200 day. I like the look of it. Could be a good day trader off of earnings, but don't chase the gap, right? Don't chase the gap if it gaps up. Uh, ENDO, ENDO. Is it ENDO or ENDP? That's not the right one. Sorry. ENDP. All right. Uh, let me take this off of this list remove and put in ENDP. ENDP reports Tuesday before the open and uh, oh, oops, 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 ENDP, ENDP, uh, I already went over that one or did I? No, I don't know. ENDP reports uh, before the open if Horizon reports good numbers. This could get a trend line break. It is does have a lot of resistance overhead, 1250, you know, 1250, uh, 13 bucks. But if you break that trend line with some good conviction, maybe we get some follow through. 222 million shares in the float. Earnings have not been good for this thing, so uh, be very careful with this one. And let's see, I've got two more. NBY. So the, these guys report. Uh, earnings uh, on Thursday, May 11th, and you know they've had this is a turnaround story. Full disclosure, I have shares in this, and um, I'm actually looking at uh, adding. Now they've they've 
earnings have been good. They went from a contracted sales force to a direct sales force. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how this quarter turns out. Uh, it's at an area, it, you know, look, it broke below the 200 day. Now I've talked about Golden Cross. This is a death cross. Uh oh, death cross. Um, if they report good earnings and good, good guidance, and maybe talk about any kind of a partnership developing on one of the products that they have out there, this thing could get a really big pop, right? Five million shares in the float. Um, not a big short interest. It's oversold. So it, it, it is an, it's at an area of potential price support, right? I'm looking at this trend line here as support. I'm looking at an area of potential price support. So ideally, if this were to get, I, I don't know what day they report, but if it were to get below 280 and maybe get down into this 250 area, I, I, I probably would look to add to my position. I, this is in my long-term hold portfolio. Um, it's just, like I said, it's a turnaround story. I think someday maybe they get acquired. I don't know. But that isn't why, you know, I, I didn't buy it because I'm looking for them to get acquired. I, I bought it because I, I, I really like the product that they have. They have a new management team, executive team there. And I think they're going to turn this company around and make it profitable. So that is why it has gotten killed is because the prior CEO just liked to dilute the shit out of the shareholders. All right. Uh, LPTH. So last one. We'll watch this one all day Friday and uh, you know I called out in the room that 250 could be a good bounce spot <laughs> and it, it swept down to 250 and then bounced and I didn't get it I tried to get it but I didn't get it uh, I thought we could get a nice bounce off the 50 day moving average the earnings were fantastic now it you know it's overbought stochastics are headed lower or, or, or have turned lower RSI has turned lower. That's fine. I, I you know, look, I, I hope that this stock goes down to two bucks because I would like to buy it at two bucks. I would like to buy it at the 200 day moving average. I may start to scale into this stock at 250 and then look to add at 225 and then look to add at two bucks uh, and take this in more of my long term hold or take it as a swing. I like this for potentially a day trade. I like it for potentially a swing trade, and I like it potentially for a long-term hold. How do you like them apples? 9.3 million shares in the float, 8% short interest. Uh, I don't, you know, insiders they bought some shares at a buck 20 when they did an offering here. Uh, I like this setup. I like the, I like the, the space that they're in. AAOI, which had a rip roaring day on Friday, uh, they're in the same space, you know. Um, I, I, I like this. I like this one quite a bit and I likely will be getting into this next week and that's it. That is it. That's all I've got. I'm done. Hey, listen, I hope you got something out of this video. I hope, uh, you've got some good trade ideas. I hope you have a, a good understanding of what we, uh, try to teach over at Alpha Wolf Trading. And, um, you know, if you're interested, if you're serious, about uh, being in the game for a long time. If you're not trying to make, you know, a million dollars overnight and uh, the get rich quick scheme, come over and check us out over at alphawolftrading.com. And uh, we might have some interesting stuff coming up shortly. Yeah, I got some things in discussion going on, or at least the start of some discussions. Got might have some pretty exciting stuff to announce in the near future. So stay posted with us at alphawolftrading.com. All right. Have a fantastic weekend. Be safe. Have fun. And uh, I'll see you all next week. Best of success to you and good luck trading.